All right, shalom, shalom, and the brothers of Great Millstone, the church in Birmingham, Alabama. And as always, I want to begin by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakat Wadash, yeah, in the ancient Hebrew tongue. Those will be the correct names of the Heavenly Father's only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit. Also, I'd like to get double honors to our teachers, the head apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Shalom to the fellow laborers out there, and as always, you believers. So yeah, we back once again through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh pretty much to pronounce judgment against this place, America, also known as Babylon the Great, in the Holy Scriptures. And pretty much um, those evil titans, which is from the Heavenly Father himself, is geared towards Esau and his kingdom, as I mentioned, being America which has proven to be nothing more than a cesspool for wickedness, you know, and, and the very hub, which has generated a very perverse spirit throughout the planet Earth, which in itself reeks for some form of judgment and justice. And this is why the Heavenly Father has now begun to set in motion his visitation, you know, towards the West, which will be peaked with the destruction of this place but preceded by a series of plagues, which will serve as scourges. And guess what? That's gonna be justifiable, man. Why for, if nothing else, the fact that uh, this place has set itself in opposition to the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh by Shemal Shah. So why wouldn't the Heavenly Father destroy this place? Matter of fact, um, what's that, the book of Jeremiah, the 49th chapter? In uh, the 12th verse, I want to say. Yeah, Jeremiah 49. <clears throat> yep, Jeremiah 49 and 12. Okay. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 49 and verse 12. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have assuredly drunk it. Mm -hmm. And art thou he that shall altogether go unpunished? Right. So if the Heavenly Father judged his own people and whom he loved. Uh, what's that? The book of Malachi, the first chapter. Well, what does that leave Esau? Who he hate? Will he go altogether unpunished? Of course not. And his kingdom proved that this place is a symbol of destruction. It is meant to be destroyed. The very reason why it was created. Matter of fact, um, we're going to come back here, but let's go to the book of uh, Psalms 92 and 5. I believe that's the fifth verse. Because the reason why this man is even on the scene is to fulfill biblical prophecy, man. I wish that Romans, the ninth chapter, and the parallels with Pharaoh, what the Lord said, for this very reason, have I raised thee up so that I might show my power. So the reason why Esau is here, so you can see that destroying wind stirred up by Yahweh by Shemal Shah, which would serve as a beautiful piece of work. Come on, I, I believe that's the matter of fact, the seventh verse. Okay. This is Psalm chapter 92 and verse 7. Matter of fact, start at the fifth verse. Okay. Verse 5. O oh Lord, how great are, are thy works, and thy thoughts are very deep. Right, and thy thoughts are very deep, which the Lord shared his thoughts with us. And you can read about that in First Corinthians, the second chapter. Go ahead. A brutish man knoweth not, neither doeth a fool understand this. Right, so those outside of the circle, they don't understand the concept of really everything being predetermined. Serving is nothing more than a manifestation of the thoughts, as we just read in the fifth verse of Yahweh by Shemal Shah, which is very deep. Hmm. You're actually... A, a, a part of the Lord's thoughts. This reality that you witness is 
The Lord's thoughts. Come on, huh? When the wicked spring as the grass. Right, when the wicked spring as the grass, which will be now. Is not this the time where the wicked is in power? Where he have come on the scene? Read that again. Come. When the wicked spring as the grass. Mm -hmm. And when all the workers of iniquity do flourish. Which that's the time we in. Go ahead. It is that they shall be destroyed forever. So the very reason why they're here is that they will be destroyed forever. See that? So now let's go back. Okay. Jeremiah chapter 59 and verse 12. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have assuredly drunken. Mm -hmm. And art thou he that shall all together go unpunished? Right. So again, here it is. The Lord visited his people and whom he loved, as I mentioned in Malachi, the first chapter. So what does that leave Esau, who he hate? And not to mention his kingdom serve as a very symbol of, of a rebellious uh, nature, right? Uh, is, is in contrast, is in complete opposition to righteousness. Remember when you read 2 Peter, the third chapter, it outlines the fact that Sodom and Gomorrah and the five neighboring cities was pretty much left as an ensample unto all those who would afterward live ungodly. So here it is. We was already punished. Matter of fact, give me the book of Jeremiah, the fifth chapter, Jeremiah 5 and 9. Because again, the Lord visited us. In fact, uh, the scriptures tell you how you and your king shall go into captivity. So pretty much the priests, the prophets, all of us was in captivity, man. So again, how much more Esau? And even when you read the parable concerning Lazarus and the rich man, which was brilliantly put together, it was pretty much uh, Yahweh Shah summarizing his whole thing in one story where it tells you how uh, the rich man, which served as a symbol of Esau and in particular the bankers, and how they was comforted in their lifetime versus Lazarus, who was, who was uh, given evil things. Mm -hmm. What well, the scriptures say what? Now, Lazarus is comforted, which is obviously concerning the world to come. But where does that leave Esau? Now he have to bear the brunt of, of the curses. See? And we're in the beginning phases of that. In fact, the Lord has given us a front row seat to his offenses so that the Lord may be justified. All right, so uh, come on up. This is Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 9. Shall I not visit thee? Excuse me. Shall I not visit for these things, saith the Lord? Mm -hmm. And shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? Right. And that's dealing with Israel. And which, when you read this chapter, it goes into the offenses of Israel. You know? Matter of fact, start at the 7 verse. Let's read right there. Okay. Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 7. How shall I pardon thee for this? Thy children have forsaken me. Right, so the Lord said, I can't even pardon you for this, man. Mm. Right, in which we're in a time now where the manifestation of those rebels of Israel is on full blast, is on display. And you see, right now we see why the Lord would not pardon these niggas, man. As well as the land tribes, and we're gonna call you what you are, you Mexicans, right? Yes. You, you like you see uh Issachar that don't even call him Issachar, you know. You know, you call him with that, you Mexicans, man. <laughs> <laughs> Guatemalans that's coming over here. Hmm. The migrants. Don't even, you know, refer to them as the corporate name that they have was given by their daddy Esau. Hmm. So you see here what the Lord said, he would not even pardon you here in his lifetime. 
Read that again. <clears throat> Jeremiah 5 and 7. How shall I pardon thee for this? Thy children have forsaken me and sworn by them that are no gods. Mm -hmm. When I had fed them to the full, then, excuse me, they then committed adultery and assembled themselves by truth in the harlot houses. Right, and you see that now in its perfection, right? Those harlot houses beginning at these churches, which that was the rallying crime. When you look at it chronologically, right, after we was brought over here in, into captivity under the subjection of our enemies, well, chronologically, once we settled in, if you will, as a people, they started to um, reach towards those idols again. But over here in the form of Cesare Bozier. So in troops, you know, they packed these churches. And even when you consider other outlets as uh, forms, different formats, if you will, as touching rebellion, whether it's a nigga cleaving to some Afrocentric movement or he claimed to be Islamic. Or even like this guy, Dr. Umar Johnson. I don't even know what banner he, he just a bug out. You know what I mean? But that's a symbol of uh, Israel, you know, by the troops flocking into these harlot houses, or in other words, cleaving to everything but their power, which is, a, that's a capital offense. That's for, that what you call spiritual fornication. Come on. They were as fed horses in the morning. Mm -hmm. Everyone neighed after his neighbor's wife. Mm -hmm. Shall not, excuse me, shall I not visit for these things, mm -hmm. saith the Lord? And shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? So again, you see in the records where the Lord swore to visit his own people, man. So you mean to tell me Esau is somehow is going to escape, is going to go unpunished? You should marvel at that. Matter of fact, let's get that real quick. Spirit. <laughs> right. As a matter yeah. of fact, you got it up. You got it. Slot. Uh, you get yeah, it kind of slot. Spirit, I um, thought about that scripture because um, like you said, the Lord mentioned several times how he was going to visit his own people. So how much more uh, a people that he was create he created to destroy? Matter of fact, you can start at um, start at some just just bagging up the point that um, the other brother mentioned. Okay. This is Ecclesiastes chapter sixteen and verse seven. He was not pacified toward the old giants who fell away in the strength of their foolishness. Yeah, and that's talking about the sons of God in, in the uh, in the time of Genesis. He wasn't pacified. He didn't turn a blind eye. You know, that flood was, hey, they, that was for them, for real, man. You know, the wicked, <clears throat> so, cause they, because they felt they, they was uh, cleaving to those other nations, the, the cousins of the, the uh, other, other nations, man. You know, that's why I said they fell, they fell away in their strength of their fortunes because they fell from that, from that path, man. You know, and you also, that word giants, um, Going to it in um in Genesis, it, it talks about um giants, but it, it goes into the fallen ones, you know. Though it fell from their uh, from that way, but you got it out. You can continue. Cunt, neither spare spared he the place where lots are joined, mm -hmm. but abhorred them for their pride. Yep. He pitied not the people of perdition. Who were taken away in their sins. And if I may, just these certain words, uh, spare, pity, pacify. That show you how by Shema was shy. He 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 uh you know concerning justice and judgment, man. He's he's not a uh he's a boundless power, man. So of course when wickedness is done, it, it have to be uh checked, you know. So even concerning uh, our people. 
it's a perfect example. You you even got a you got the book of judges with Jake just constantly going through captivity, mm-hmm. you know. But you got it out. Nor the six hundred thousand footmen who were gathered together in the hardness of their hearts. Mm-hmm. And if there be one stiff neck from the people, it is marvel if he escape unpunished. So as you can see, um, all these examples that was brought up show you that the Lord is not going. The Lord, He's going to cross a dot every I and cross every T, man. You know, he's, he's no stone left unturned. So you have seen the Lord did with our people with slavery, and and now you see it was justified just how our people act today. You, you like these niggas got to go back, go back to slavery, you know. Hmm. How they acting, you know? It was it will you see what the Lord have done in our people, and, and as the elder mentioned as well, you know, he said even our kings, king went into the captivity, priests, everyone went into captivity. So how much more of the other nation, especially the, the one who the Lord hate, man? Yeah, even Hawkins. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah, God. yeah. Get away, man. <laughs> yep, you got it up. Con. And if there be one stiff neck among the people, it is marvel if he escaped unpunished. Huh? For mercy and wrath are with him. He is mighty to forgive. And to pour out displeasure. And guess what? That's going to be on display on both ends. Uh, and you're seeing it right now, by the way, that mercy, you know, with, by the way, the Lord giving us this truth, this understanding. And that's going to only increase, you know, all the way to the kingdom, from the from the deliverance to the kingdom. But even that wrath is being on display by the way of this, this message, you know, as well as the Lord visiting the earth by the way of these certain plagues and Tempests and storms and earthquakes, all the way up to the destruction, man. That's why he's gonna he's he mighty for, to forgive, and that Lord gonna send you house out. That's gonna be a climax of it, you know, the deliverance and it, to pour out displeasure. That's the Lord dumping on missiles on this place, man. You know, but you gotta know what. Uh, continue and continue that up, what we're Con, As His mercy is great. Yeah. So is his correction also. Yeah, because um, when you look at it on a grand scale, the destruction is going to be somewhat of a course correction. Mm-hmm. Right? Everything is going to be set in its natural order. We're going to go back to the natural order of things. So uh, that correction is going to be great as well. Matter of fact, the team. He judge of a man according to his works. Right. He judge of a man according to his works. So the Lord is not bribed. He's not swayed. He's going to, we're going to uh, award you according to your sacrifice. Uh, what's that? Revelation in the 22nd chapter. Uh-huh. The Lord cometh quickly and he have with him the reward, <laughs> man. Go ahead. The sinner shall not escape. With his spoils. Right. Esau, he's not going to escape. You should marvel if America is not destroyed. Which, uh, when you go into that word marvel, one of the definitions is to be filled with amazement. You should be amazed. You know, not only just surprised, you should be, oh my gosh. (laughs) Right? (laughs) If this man escaped with the spoils, which that's across the board, rather him dying. Oh, for an example, um, you had these slave owners back then, and they dealt cruel with, with the children of Israel and committed all type of lewd and wicked acts, yet they died in peace. Mm. They died with their family around their bed. They died full and prosperous. So if the Lord was in the power of justice, then that means that spirit would have Escape with the spoils, right? He got away, and uh, his 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 fatness 
with all of his goods, he was able to leave his legacy to his children and set up a soft landing for their children and their children. But we understand reincarnation and the science behind it. Matter of fact, um, give me that real quick in Psalms, the sixth chapter. We're going to come back here. Psalms 6 and 10. <clears throat> Huh. This is Psalms chapter 6 and verse 10. Let all mine enemies be ashamed and sore vexed. Let them return and be ashamed suddenly. Let them return. So for these devils who thought they got away scot-free, they escaped with the spoils. No. The Lord is going to regenerate that spirit. He's going to come back and they're going to be put to shame, man. All of those devils who bask in the glory of uh, you know, defeating Israel in whatever time period it might have been. For an example, uh, the 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 uh, goons, if you will, of Christopher Columbus. Right, the story is the stories are horrific, as touching their ill dealings and treatment towards the natives which were of the tribes of Israel, in particular, Gad and Reuben. Well, this devil wrote in his memoirs, well, I forget the other guy, he was a, uh, I think he was a, a priest. He, he, oh, yeah. he came along with Christopher Columbus. Uh -huh. He told these chilling stories. He was even sick to his stomach at some of the stuff that he witnessed. He was physically sick. Well, these devils, for an example, to test the integrity of they swore it. the spark they swore it was they'll hack off the limbs of the natives, man. We talk about ages ranging from five years old up to 12 years old. They had them mining for gold relentlessly. And when they couldn't meet a quarter, they'll cut they'll hack their fucking hand off, man. They'll, they'll cut their nose off, their lips off. And a lot of them devils, they just died, you know, without being judged. And, and, and with the naked eye, it would be perceived as if they got away. But no, let's read this again. Huh? Huh. Psalms chapter 6 and verse 10. Let all mine enemies be ashamed and sore vex. Mm -hmm. Let them return and be ashamed suddenly. See, let them return. So those spirits will be brought back. No one gets away. And really, that's the science behind reincarnation, to establish judgment. How do we know that? When you go into the law, and chiefly, um, what's that, Exodus, the 20th chapter, around the fifth verse? You see? So let's go back up to what yeah. we left off. Ecclesiastes, chapter Sarak, that's like <laughs> Sarak, chapter 16. And verse 13, it says, the sinner shall not escape with his spoils. And again, that's across the board from these devils in the past who, who died and it was perceived that they escaped with no judgment. But that also applies to these devils that you see today and, and their attempts to try to flee out of the atmosphere. Right, they're gonna to try to escape the judgment of the lamb at his return, the destruction. They think they're gonna go into these bunkers and to these space stations and they're gonna crawl out of their little rat hole and, and press reset. No, they're not gonna escape with the sports. Go ahead. Okay. And the patient excuse me, and the patience of the godly shall not be frustrated. Right, and on the flip side, which there's a duality to the message, and this is what perfects it, our patience is not going to be frustrated. Because what makes us patient? Well, we woke up to the fact, due to the spirit of mercy and power of Yahweh Bashamah, we woke up to the fact that there's a power that's above us. You know, we have no power in our hand. So in that, 
we we have adopted the mindset that we at the mercy of a higher power. And with that, now you have to wait patiently on that power to redeem you and to deliver you and set you up and to and to give you that justice. Come on. Out. Make way for every work of mercy, for every man shall find according to his works. Go ahead. The Lord hardened Pharaoh that he should not know him, that his powerful works might be known to the world. Right. And we mentioned that in Romans, the ninth chapter. And who would be the modern day Pharaoh? Esau. So the Lord have hardened Esau. He set himself in a way in opposition to the Most High. And ultimately, this is cemented by him not knowing the Most High. Right? This is why he tried to uh, concoct this elaborate presentation to discredit the thought of a higher power. With this whole Big Bang Theory. You can have one of these devils who've been studying uh, the, the human anatomy, the body, for 50 years and still don't believe in the Lord. <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you see, yeah, devil, they got a, they got all this technology. They can look peer out into the heavens. They see these chariots, and and they still can't find a place in they, you know, in their heart to acknowledge and reverence your how about some how about So, um, yeah, that's it right there. We got anything else? If not, we could go back. Okay. This is Jeremiah. Chapter 49 and verse 12. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have assuredly drunk it. And art thou he that shall go unpunished? That shall excuse me, that shall altogether go unpunished. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not go unpunished. But thou shalt surely drink of it. Right. You're gonna to have to digest it because uh drinking what 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 dramatizes this judgment is is key words. There's certain words that the Lord used to pretty much dramatize this thing. And one of them is drinking or drink, because that process is just that is a maturation. When you drink something, it, it starts off in the mouth and then you swallow it, it goes through the digestive process. And how does that apply to Esau? That means he have to deal with it. Hmm. He's gonna have to deal with it. You know, because once it once it starts that process, once it goes in the mouth and come down, it, it's already started that, you know, that process. So he's gonna have to drink it, man. And the scripture speaks about how he's going to drink it down to the dreads. So, matter of fact, let's continue on this. Okay. For I have sworn by myself, said the Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, that Basra shall become a desolation. See, so you see where the visitation of the wicked will be cemented by the Lord visiting his throne, his baby, which is America. Matter of fact, let's click on that word Basra real quick. Okay. Huh. Scrolls H <clears throat> twelve twenty four. It says Basra, sheepfold or fortress. A town in Edom. Right, a town in Edom, man. Which your fortress, that's pretty much your headquarters, so to speak. Mm -hmm. See, <clears throat> let's go down to the Strongs. Okay. It says, a place in Edom, Basra. Right. So Basra is really wherever Esau pitches tents and chiefly his, his, his capital which will apply to America, Babylon the Great. So when the Lord said he would not leave the wicked altogether unpunished, 
then that punishment will come, it will be manifest through his fortress. That that's the uh the destination in which the Lord will visit. Which again, this is justified, man. You know, as we sing this song, you have a lot of naysayers out there, chiefly due to their alliance with this place, they have somewhat a sentimental value, a connection to it. So when we start presenting the idea of this place being destroyed, and not only that, when we go into detail, we go into uh, the famine and power outages and everything that might contribute to taking away from you people's luxury, well, you come up against it. In fact, you view it as being somewhat harsh, which it is, but um, you come up as if the Lord wrong, right? That's pretty much the stance. Like yeah. the Lord is wrong for this. Uh, what's that? Um, who, who shall who shall accuse thee? Yeah, Did we get that? <laughs> I think it's um, wisdom of Solomon, uh -huh. um, the twelfth chapter. Yeah, when you feel some type of way, you see us with a missile sign, and you feel some type of way, that's pretty much accusing the Lord. You're saying the Lord wrong. You're saying that the Lord miscalculated, it was a miscalculation with the Lord and his case against Edom. Come on. Uh, the 12th verse, I thank God. <laughs> the water. Wisdom of Solomon, <clears throat> chapter 12, verse 20. Verse 20. Oh, verse, verse 12. 12, it's like. It's like. Verse 12, <clears throat> it says, For who mm -hmm. shall say, what hast thou done? Or who shall withstand thy judgment? Right. Who, who shall come up against the Lord and, and, and question him for his thoughts, right, which we open up with in Psalms, the 92nd chapter, mm -hmm. for his thoughts, and, and the evils that he have devised against Esau. But you know what? You actually have people that come up against it. Again, those uh, naysayers out there who, who are not sympathetic to the testimony of Yahweh Shai, to even you sophisticated scoffers who actually upload videos to come up against us, you make your case, your presentation. You, know, you mm -hmm. scoffers, there's some knucklehead on the comment board pretty much don't look before they leap they just make some crazy comment well in reality that frustration is, is geared towards the most high uh what's that first thessalonians the fourth chapter what right up kind or who shall accuse thee for the nations that perish right which in this case would be esau who are you to accuse the Most High of pronouncing judgment against the so-called white man in this wicked place of America, man? You know what? You ought to be destroyed right with it. Because America, oh, matter of fact, go to the book of Psalms 137, and, and y'all see what's happening. <laughs> right? That interrogation, yeah. <laughs> that inquisition. Whenever you get on Esau, it's going to, through the Spirit, it's going to be a prolonged hmm. interrogation. So let's try to get through this. <laughs> yep. uh, come on. I believe this. Yep. Matter of fact, start at the seven verse. Okay. Psalms 137 and 7. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, race it, race it, even to the foundation thereof. Mm -hmm. O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed. And so again, you see here what Edom is in the same breath with Babylon. That's his throne. So the Lord's anger kindled against Esau will be manifest by visiting his city. The Lord is going to burn down his city and scatter him. And from hence, he will be rounded up and taken into captivity. Read that again. O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happy shall he be that reward of thee as thou hast served us. Right. So what's the point there? This place ought to be destroyed. 
See that? So if you come up against that concept, let's go back. Yeah. You coming up against the most high, man. You questioning the, the wisdom, the judgment of your how about your how side. Come on, huh? Come, wisdom of Solomon 12 and 12. For who shall say, What hast thou done? Or who shall withstand thy judgment? Yeah, you standing. Like, you just say you got two guys pit against one another. You have somebody to step in between. Hmm. That's a form of you trying to withstand whatever anger, like someone's trying to release. You're trying to step in front of the most high and tell him to chill. And that's what you're saying, man, when you uh, question the doctrine. That's equivalent. That's likening to questioning the motives of your how about some how about Come on, huh? Or who shall accuse thee for the nations that perish, mm -hmm. whom thou made? Or who shall come to stand against thee to be revenged for the unrighteous men? Right. So the unrighteous men, then Esau, and his visitation, which again would be manifest by way of the violent takedown of his kingdom. Well, that's already determined by the Most High, man. And furthermore, the Lord is justified. Just take a step back and assess the way this kingdom is ran. Again, it serves as a symbol of rebellion, seeing that it's set in opposition to righteousness, man. The law steps and commandments of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. See? So, yeah, that's it right there. All right. Anything else? Y'all got anything else? Before we go back, no, I ain't got nothing. Okay, so let's go back. Right. Okay. This is Jeremiah chapter 49 and verse 13. For I have sworn by myself, saith the Lord, that Bible shall become a desolation. A reproach, a waste, and a curse, and all cities thereof shall be perpetual waste. Right. So this place is going to be a complete and utter desolation, a desert place, a wilderness. And how would this feat be accomplished by way of World War Three? Which, if you didn't get the memo, is biblical. If you knew to this style of teaching, the teachings of your house, well, we'll save you the. Intrigue. Ultimately, in a nutshell, America is going to be destroyed in a thermonuclear holocaust. That's why Russia is preparing himself. Uh, what's that? Ezekiel the thirty-eighth chapter. That's why you got missiles sitting in silos. It's actually missiles pointed towards America in Israel and other places. So the pieces are in place. And the Lord will make good on these death threats that we read reading right here. See? But again, the moral of the story is what? This place ought to be destroyed. The Lord will be justified in his visitation of Esau, the so-called white man, which has now been officially set in motion. So with that said, that destruction, as all the works of the Most High, there's a build up to it. And, uh, the visitation of the Lord again will be manifest in the form of various plagues. So, yeah, let's let's go ahead and segue into what we got. It's getting hot in the planet Earth, man. The Lord is making His presence felt as promised, which parallels uh, the old world, ancient Egypt. Remember the ancient Egyptians, they knew nothing of these great powers, Yahweh, his son, Yahweh Shah. They knew nothing about the host of heavens. But what was the bridge? What was the segue? What introduced them? The Lord raised up Moses and Aaron in the stead of prophets, and they had a diligent spirit on them. They continually pressed Pharaoh in his house. And the Lord was instigating it because the Lord would harden Pharaoh's heart to, to pretty much create that resistance. Well, see, that's the time we're in now. The Lord had put a diligent spirit on the prophets 
and we are constantly bombarding these devils. Oh, what's that? Isaiah, the, the 13th chapter? Go to the gates of the nobles. Yep. See? Which when you go into that word noble, it translates to princess. So this word has now officially accomplished what it was set out to do, and that's to rest and settle on the hearts and minds of not only the people, but chiefly the powers that be. So come on, huh? John, it says from endtimeheadlines.org, Biden administration warns U.S. port to prepare for cyber attacks as nationwide infrastructure is targeted. Right. The nationwide infrastructure which is pretty much based upon the internet of things. The infrastructure of this place has gradually grown into uh, a web. You know what? And that goes back to the Mossad, man. This is a snare, this place here, America, the pit. This system, which that word system goes back to pit. So now you have this system, even when you look at a, um, you look at one of those boards, let's say if you break down a computer or a video game, Whatever, and you see those little, you see those boards. I forget what they call them. You might know what I'm talking about. Circuit boards. Circuit board, the water. It looked like streets. It, when you look at it, it looked like a, a system of streets. And <laughs> that's pretty much what America is, man. It's, it's uh, the infrastructure of Satan. <laughs> it's an actual system, it's a well where you snare. Case in point, right? The zoo. When you go to the zoo, and I was just speaking about this because our spirit got on me to say, man, I, I'm not going to the zoo no more, Lord will, because you know why? You placing yourself, you right in the proximity of lions, man. You know, even though we know the Lord got us and we pray that Yahweh should not keep us, but let's say you're watching um, the National Geographic channel. You said to yourself, man, I, I don't want to be near that, you know, that lion, you know. Hmm. When you're at the zoo, you're right there. But the reason why I say this is because um, it's all built upon this system, the Internet of Things. It's a computer operated. Hmm. One mishap and you hear that door slide open. Hmm. And it's a gorilla. Right, which a gorilla can crush a man's skull with, with ease. Hmm. But what's the point there? It, it's all based upon the computer. Mm -hmm. That the infrastructure, see, this nationwide infrastructure is set up digitally. Another example, jails. Mm -hmm. Right? You go to these jails, it's not old fashioned, you got an old key, you put it in there, you lock it. <laughs> no, they have the computer now where they just they open the block, cell blocks and different cells and <laughs> see? So if this place is open to a cyber attack, then that stresses this nationwide infrastructure, which is beyond your computer, right? And your and your bank account. It goes far beyond it. This threat of cyber attacks, again, um, threatening the infrastructure, it actually threatens your safety as well. Matter of fact, let's segue over to the next article. <clears throat> From newsbreak.com. Yeah, Barack. 911. That's like That's like it. Right. 911 outage in four states likely caused by a mass cyber attack kind if i may it said um if i had mentioned that it has that's going to bring danger man mm -hmm. you know and ultimately your help your cry for e is going to be taken away as well you know because that's a that's like a staff you know 911 that's a that, that's 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 like a, a stronghold you know a refuge for a lot of people, uh, people especially like the so-called black women, you know, so that's that's gonna be a crush taken away, man. <clears throat> yeah, 
that's the Lord. That's that's part of evil, you know, recipe and uh of disaster in the making, man. Or if I may, scripture say uh the time when the Lord would turn away his face. Mm. That's really like all oh, good luck. You know how you have that that fortune, that good fortune. Uh -huh. It's just about to run into a, uh, you know, it was something about the a tree limb about to fall and hit hit you, and you just escape. Mm. That's going to be out the window that day, man. When the Lord turned away His face, every you're going to be snared. Only those of the elect who are destined to be preserved and kept from the sad perils would, would be preserved. Because you're going to know in that day, hold up, the Lord dealing with them, man. Look, look at everything how it's taking place. But you got these certain spirits that's kept. But yeah, it's far beyond, you know, as touching a cyber attack, it's far beyond your bank account being compromised. No, you see here where the possibility of a cyber attack actually affects your ability to call out for help. <laughs> 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 Yeah, hey, see, now you're going to see where this place is the pit. It snares all over, man. And the infrastructure itself is an actual snare. Mm. Kind of, was there any more into this? Uh, I think it's like. Oh, you got it, bro. It's a lot. I think that was pretty much the point on it. But it showed them, it showed them four states that were uh, mm. dealing with it. You know, no, pretty much it. On, but I got some real. I got a precept, real quick. Um, the um uh, the book of um Ecclesiastes twelve. Yeah. Mm. Uh, in, in the first verse. Okay. <clears throat> Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 1 remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth mm -hmm. while the evil days come not nor the years grow now when thou shalt say I have no pleasure in them come so it's a sense of urgency to return to your how by Shemal Shah because you know, now we really pretty much are in the midst of these evil days. There's nothing you can't really have a ain't no such thing as a good day no more, man. That was just a figure of speech because mm -hmm. it's nothing but evils and only evils taking place on planet Earth, man. You know, to where now your call for help, you know, is 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 potentially could be compromised, which it ultimately will be. Mm -hmm. And, and and Richard talk about how uh, you shall call on me, you know. Hey, hey, that ain't just yeah. You know I mean, the Lord set that up beautifully, man, because that's on all levels. Even that's now, cool. that's a part of you know, hmm. motherfucker actually had to call nine one one during that time. And guess what? It, it didn't go through, man. That was of the Lord, man. You know, so you seeing it's only increasing, man. If I may. Like even when you call on 911, you actually call it on your house shot, whether you know it or not. Mm -hmm. Why? You call in to be delivered. Now, who cares if you don't know who is the source behind that deliverance? No. Whenever you cry out to be saved, you really cry for your house shot. But you might be calling for you could be calling Junior, you know. Oh, remember the guy uh, uh the Tesla? All right. He was calling out to the guy. He said, look, help me. And the guy said, I can't help you. That was because Yahweh Shai didn't sanction it. Because remember, Yahweh Shai is the deliverer, man. So even when you call out to 911, although in your warped little mind, in your little reality, you think you're calling out to the cops to save you. But really, deliverance on all fronts is orchestrated through Yahweh Shai. So when you call out for salvation, again, when you 
called out for salvation, whether you know it or not, you're calling out to Yahweh Shai. And somebody might say, well, hold up. Well, why would the Lord save a, a Edomite out of a burning fire? That's because the scriptures say, well, the Lord know how to preserve. Uh, what's that? Um, is that second, second Peter? Yeah, God. Right, the Lord know how to preserve the wicked for the day of destruction, man. Mm. So the Lord keep your eyes around you 97 years old so you can get a missile. But it's your house shot. That's why the scriptures say none can deliver you out of my hand. So whenever mm. you deliver, that's the Lord who delivered your ass. Now he could be delivering you up for a bigger form of destruction as well. All right, come on. <clears throat> this is from cybersecurityguide.org. It says a cyber attack on a food and agricultural company could disrupt food production and distribution. Well, hold up. You see now what is what a cyber attack, which again it compromises the nationwide infrastructure of America, Babylon the Great. Why? Because it's all based upon the internet of things. So a cyber attack, again, you see where it goes far beyond you trying to protect your bank account. Because that's the first thing that comes to mind, cyber attack. Now you hacked. Somebody got in your Facebook. You know, it's just a low level thinking. But mm -hmm. no, this has to do with the whole infrastructure of America, man. And you see where the brother brought out the article is touching the cyber attack, potentially affecting 911 calls. What we see here in this case where a cyber attack can affect the distribution of food. Matter of fact, you got it up. Huh. A cyber attack on a food and agricultural company could disrupt food production and distribution, leading to food shortages and higher prices it could also yeah. contaminate if i may that's a real reality that can contribute to um the famine as well we already know that it's going to be a man-made overtone to it you see what bg bought up all the farmland 98 percent of it in fact well from there he pretty much torched all the livestock he destroyed all the the dairy products, the milk, the eggs. But uh, also, right, a cyber attack that can, without a person physically setting in motion, setting himself against, you know, a place and storming in with weapons, you can have a guy behind a, at a desk, he hacked into it, and that shuts off, that compromised the distribution of food, man. As well as the production of it, which will lead to food shortages. Now, the reason why I say that could very well be a possibility, because um, when you read Revelation, the 18th chapter, right, as touching, uh, matter of fact, could we get, matter of fact, is there any more on this? Yeah, that was pretty much. That's it? Okay, let's yeah. go to Revelation, the 18th, the, the uh, 18th chapter, I believe the seventh verse. Revelation chapter 18 and verse 7 how much she have glorified herself and lived deliciously so much torment and sorrow give her for she said in her heart I sit a queen and am no widow right, so the and Lord just the Lord is going to combat the mirth, the folly of this place with mourning, lamentations, and woe. And that's a that's a, a righteous judgment. That's how the Lord judged this case. He's going to ultimately destroy it, but before he do it, he's going to um, he's going to bring low all the lofty looks. See. This place is going to be uh, brought from sugar to shit, as they say. Hmm. 
Come on. Huh. So much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. Mm -hmm. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day. Death and mourning mm -hmm. and famine and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord power who judge of her. So again, the, the Lord is judging this case. If this is the verdict. Mm -hmm. This place will be destroyed. All right. Scripture says she shall be utterly burned with fire. That's concerning the destruction that the Lord has laid up here in his lifetime. See? But it will be preceded by what? Death. Mourning. Which is going to be, again, an effort to combat the folly. Right now, you know, these people, they're uh, in the spirit of mirth. Or well, at least that's what they portray on their social media accounts. You know, everybody's smiling, playing around, man. Not understanding that the anger of the Lord, the Lord set his sights on America. You see? So before this place is utterly burned and left for complete desolation, again, it will be visited with death, mourning, and famine. Real quick, click on that word famine. Okay. Strong's G thirty forty two. It says scarcity of harvest, famine. Right. It says scarcity of harvest, famine. Now, Baba Kasar, can we click on that word scarcity? <clears throat> that word scarcity, the state of being scarce or in short supply, shortage. Shortage, see? So as touching these cyber attacks and their potential to affect the production and distribution of food, where it say ultimately will lead to what? Shortages. Mm-hmm. That word is best suited. It's, it's almost become a stigma. It's associated, it's attached to America, Babylon the Great. Shortages. Oh, remember you had uh, niggas was grunting to get tissue. Right? <laughs> All they heard, they heard the word shortage and they started buying them. They contributed to the shortage. <laughs> like the Lord is a snare, man. There's no way you can get out of it, you know? Because you think you combating it. Oh, let me stock up, but you actually contributed to it. <laughs> See? And the one thing you don't have is time. So, you know, your shit is going to eventually run out. Look, unless you're a part of the elect, this message, these evil titans, right, is um, it's, it's fit, it's suited for you. See, only the elect will be kept. And even in that, uh, you have to continue to endure. The scriptures say, what? He who endured to the end. So at no point can you ever get too relaxed. Right? You got to continue to build the ark, pretty much. Because, hey, let's say if Noah would have slacked off from building the ark. That slackness would really assure his destruction because the ark had to be built in such a way that the dimensions of it, it had to be completed perfectly for it to withstand those turbulent winds. Well, guess what? That's us. We have to continue in it. You know, for those of you believers out there, you got to continue to believe, hold fast. Those of us who was delegated to teaching this word, we have to continue to labor. See? So the ark could be finished, the, the temple, and that hedge of protection can be completed. Because it's about to go down, you know, for those of us in the north, you can feel it in the air, man. And this thing is so volatile to where it could be a minute from now. 
right? It could it, the next minute it could be power outages or see. And then once you are faced with those shortages and that scarcity, what happens? You you're presented with an outlet. If you get the Karag one. So, you know, just sit back you know, and watch. Hey, this thing is going to get interesting. Right? Um, pretty much the Lord has already said in most of these things. Uh, what's that second Ezra, the 15th chapter? Who can turn back that sword, that shot from a mighty archer? Who can kindle that fire once it has begun to burn? Mm -hmm. So the cat is out the bag. Pretty much the horse have left the stall. This thing is racing too, man. So yeah, um, anything else out there? Other than that. Hey, so with that, I'm gonna give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakat Kodash, double honors to our teachers, the head apostles, and elders, the great millstones, Shalom to the fellow laborers out there, and as always, you believers, to the next time, Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.